Send a powerful message to those people who live in the past and tell them no more business as usual and no more repeat performances because we're going to make America great again. Hey everyone, welcome once again to yet another stellar, fantastic episode of Two Noobs Talking. And of course, with my good buddy, Mr. John Tracy with me. John, how you doing tonight, man? Going on, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. I'm, of course, Matt Craig. Happy you are with us. And everyone, it is episode 48 of Two Noobs Talking. We're getting so close to 50. We're going to dive right into the pool, John. It's awesome. Um, I'm already know, planning uh, for 50. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, big, big in the works for sure. I know for a fact uh, that there have been very famous people that have worn 48 uh, in the Philadelphia uh, sports scene. Oh, Wes wow. Hopkins being one of them. He was my favorite free oh. safety back in the day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One of my favorites. You came up with a local kid, though. Yeah, little John Ritchie. You know, oh, and I, oh, I always loved that guy. I mean, he was that really that hard-nosed football player that mm-hmm. – you know, good played player. every time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Raiders Eagles played like a very small career. Uh, yeah, I think great. He was, he's actually yeah. great. I, I forgot that he was I've been haven't been in Philly in so long. Like to to enjoy the sports talk radio, but him and Joe DeCamera have a great show. If you like, if you like like real sports talk, like they, I, I I love those guys when I was listening to them. Love it, love it. But then of course we can't go without mentioning Danny Briere, right? Philadelphia Flyer, Buffalo one of the favorite. all-time greats in the history of that organization. Um, the big winner. signing. I remember when he was signed by the Flyers, you know, coming off of the Buffalo Sabres and man alive. One of the best ever, uh, you know, in the playoffs. He just like rose his game to another level. Yep, every time. Oh, just a the- little side note of Danny Briere. When they had those black jerseys, when they changed the jerseys and they made them the more sleek ones, yeah. Danny Brer was the sole reason I bought a Flyers jersey. I was not a Flyers fan. I was not like I was not really in the hockey at that time. I was like a huge Danny Brer fan coming off of Buffalo nice. when he signed with the Flyers and those new jerseys came out. I I, I dropped two hundred bucks instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need that jersey because he's great. Yeah, I, just, I love Danny Brer. I mean, you can't go wrong, too, with, like, the first game that he played in Calgary. I remember watching that game and two goals. I mean, it's just, you know, what more can you possibly ask for out of the guy? And then, of course, the playoffs, he was just money. Money. You roll him out there, he'd score a goal. I mean, it didn't, and it didn't matter where it was. Top yeah. of the circle, blue line, down low. Such a smart player. Yeah. Such. And such a pest. I mean, he was just such a great, such a great athlete, too. I mean, it's just, and beloved. I think he still works for the Flyers, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, good for him. Good for him. I love him. I met him a couple times doing uh, events in Philly. He's just a top-notch dude. Such a top-notch dude, yeah. Absolutely. So, John, as always, we got a lot going on. Let's just dive right into the pool, shall we? Uh, with you. our first topic, um, I don't know if you've heard... Uh, but apparently the Miami Herald had an article. We're going to throw that up on screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they definitely had an article, man. They definitely had a, yeah, it was a piece of trash and, uh, they're rightly Ooh. getting skewed for it because it's completely and totally wrong. And we'll get into that. Um, but you know, their headline says it all, uh, Devon Couture, I, I, sorry if I mispronounced the name, uh, Butchered that, uh, unfortunately, just like I'm butchering this article. Florida COVID update, 901 added deaths. Yes. Largest single-day increase in pandemic history, John. Whoa! Making history in a pandemic, apparently. <laughs> Might as well. That'll pop, right? Uh, and, of course, like we also have these wonderful tweets, which we're now going to show on screen here. The left went uh, gaga over this. Oh, my God, this is horrible. This is terrible. And yeah, exactly. All the DeSantis haters crawled out from their uh, cockroach nest. Exactly, exactly. I one of my favorites, of course, was uh, Anna Weinstein from MSNBC, that really paragon of virtue network. Oh, Pardon me, but holy yes, you know, and uh, primetime host Chris Hayes and MSNBC. My God, this is horrible. Da, 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 da. There's only one problem, though, and that is that the deaths didn't all occur 
uh, on A26. Why don't we go ahead and just do a little bit of a deep dive, Johnny, shall we? Let's uh, let's go ahead and fire up that screenshot show. Let's do it. So what you're looking at here, and this is really important, this is pulled from the Florida uh, Department of Health. And John and I really kind of poured over this, right? I mean... For a while, yes. For a while. You know, because it, it is, when you first look at it at glance, we'll go ahead and click on it, Johnny. Really, the big thing that we see right off the bat there is the deaths reported on 826. And as you can see down at the bottom, mm -hmm. there's 901. So right away, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, the Miami Herald's right. They're reporting on the fact that there's 901 deaths that were reported on 826. Well, there's a huge problem with that. Go ahead and click next, Johnny. Right there is the date of death, and that is so incredibly vital. As you can see, really from the top all the way down to the bottom, they list them right around right around um, mid to late July, all the way down to the end of August of 2021. And as you can see, the big, and let's just go ahead and click next on this. This is where the mainstream media always, always, always seems to get it wrong, right? Yep. What I think is happening here is that the Florida Department of Health, in conjunction with the Centers with the with the with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, ha. Huh. What they ended up doing, I think, was doing a bunch of autopsies. Unfortunately, with all the people that did pass away, absolutely. And what was happening was they went back to the people that died ultimately on July twenty fourth, shall we say. Initially, Florida reported 73 mm -hmm. through around August 24th. Well, then they did an autopsy and they found an additional death that happened on 826, mm -hmm. quote unquote. What happened was that person that ultimately died happened on July 24th, not on April, not on August 26th. That's key because essentially what they're finding is, oh, my gosh, there's this one additional person that did die of covid on 724 that was not reported on 724 or prior to 724 until they found it on 826 and then oh we got to correct the data yes always okay. you do have to correct the data I, it's not a it's not a smear on what they're doing mm -hmm. they have to correct the data because there there are places like new york and pennsylvania we've talked about this detroit or i'm sorry michigan no well, detroit yep. actually it was detroit specifically that the health department was a um, bunch of scumbags. California, uh, Illinois, the, the COVID numbers were wonky in the uh, in the early earliness of the pandemic. Um, oh, sure, yeah. The governor lost his job for partly for that in mm -hmm. the Cuomo thing. We don't need to you know bring him up in here, but he did, he you know resigned because he was getting heat from two different sides. And oh yeah. I mean, if anything, the, the biggest thing that Florida did that Cuomo didn't do was the fact that the Florida Department of Health actually did their job and found these additional deaths that did take place mm -hmm. that weren't initially reported. That, again, is so incredibly key. I cannot emphasize it enough. So Absolutely. we'll have the link to this in the show notes. But essentially, what's again, what's happening is you'll find that there were additional deaths that weren't initially reported. So that's where the discrepancy of this 901 mm -hmm. that is happening. But what does the Miami Herald run? They run something that's completely and totally disingenuous, not correct, not properly vetted out, not properly uh, analyzed completely. And they don't ask questions. They just go ahead and just, just report on something the Florida Department of Health rightly as it has been doing all throughout. And here, really. here's, here's a point for everybody who's interested in uh, researching articles and doing things like this where you talk about articles. There's one really simple thing that you can learn who's full of shit in the media. Yep. If there are articles written about how much that article is full of shit mm -hmm. and less articles written in support of it, it's very simple to understand that it's a piece of... If Fox News and CNN both wrote an article about how the Miami Herald is fear mongering, mm -hmm. it, you're pretty. It's pretty clear and concise that they're fear mongering because both of them, yeah, love stuff like this. Fox yeah. News and CNN love sensationalizing media. That's yeah. what they do. That's their job. That's their job exactly. And you know that I think has definitely contributed to so much of the confusion. 
I think so. That you see with data that is rightly being presented and corrected. And I think really it kind of, on my side of the aisle here, Johnny, thinking about it, it's really just remaining patient throughout all of this Mm -hmm. has really been difficult for a lot of people because they all want to see the end of this. And rightly so, and I get it. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like there are going to be, there's going to be times where we're going to have incorrect data and then there are going to be times where we need to make corrections to that data. Yeah. The big thing is, though, those that have integrity, like the Florida Department of Health, let's just knock on wood, but <laughs> if you have well, integrity, you know you have to make those corrections, ultimately. Yeah. And I think that's what Florida did, whereas we have Cuomo, th- just think about it, the inverse opposite of what was happening, he's hiding that data for political reasons that is more insidious than anything else mm-hmm. and rightly he was thrown out he was thrown out not because of that but because of his sexual misconducts and everything of that sort but he but, would have been thrown out for the other thing exactly too yeah there would have there's would have been a definite investigation but we wanted to highlight this on this podcast right i mean at the end of the day <laughs> to kind of say okay wait a minute what's going on here all this hubbub over miami herald once again swinging and missing and you got to love it. Huh. Wow. Yeah. It, and just, just as a side note to the whole, the COVID death things too. Um, just, there is a fine little thing that people need to look at. It's not just if you died from COVID, mm-hmm. most of the death that they're re-reporting is you died with COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been said throughout this administration. So these, they're required by the government to report that the, the with or from, yep. it doesn't mean anything to the federal government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think you rightly pointed out in pre-production, why do they do that? Well, money, unfortunately. Yeah. Right? Disaster, disaster relief is a huge thing between states and governments. Mm-hmm. If like, like Louisiana, Pennsylvania with the tornadoes and the, and the hurricane, they're going to get a ton of money. Yeah. Towards... Or, for the devastation more devastation more money yeah simple it's how the federal government helps yeah quote unquote but (laughs) corruption that's how you know that's you know if you can get an extra and this is this is no joke this is real life Mm -hmm. if you can get an extra that's what makes cuomo so weird that he was hiding deaths yeah it made no sense it It was like reverse corruption it was like he was corrupt for his own good screw Mm -hmm. new york yeah like that was the weird part about Cuomo, yeah. but most Wolf and Wolf and uh, our, our girl Gretchen up there, mm-hmm. um, and Newsom, they want it. They want yo Murphy. They wanted numbers in the beginning because they got more money. They got more relief for it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, exactly. And that and, you know, and that all has to do too with insurance and all all of those lines as well. It's funny uh, I even bring that up because I remember getting a text from my insurance provider saying, "Hey." You're in the path of the hurricane. Just letting you know that you can file a claim or whatever. And I mean, how many false claims have they, Yeah. You know, how many have gone I a, through? I got a text the other day saying, uh, I live in Texas, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I got a text from PA state government. Like it was a literal text that said, you know, if you lost your job for COVID, fill out this form and. No kidding. I don't live, I, I, I don't live in Pennsylvania. I haven't lived in Pennsylvania for a while. Isn't that amazing? Makes me wonder if it's because it's the area code of your of the cell phone. Yeah, yeah. And my and my phone has never changed, so most likely. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, so it's kind of just shocking in that regard. But yeah, we wanted to highlight that. Um, and again, we'll have that in the show notes and and all the articles. Of course, we're oh, put that in you know with the with the show notes and tunebstock and wordpress dot com. Of course, for that. So we'll throw that in there. But John, this kind of leads into our second topic, right? And that's a great Wall Street Journal. This is from a few years ago. We want to sixteen, I believe. 2016, exactly. We wanted to kind of point this out because this, I think, has definitely been a contributing factor to all of this. But it, it, it could have been written yesterday. Oh and yeah, the same. This is this is what really good articles do. When Absolutely. You can, when you write it in 16 and it's relevant right now, also, mm-hmm. these were the warning signs that you know. It, it really is shocking. Yeah, most students don't know when news is fake, Stanford study finds, and the subhead 
Teens absorb social media news without considering the source. Parents can teach research skills and skepticism. I love that at the end yes. of that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so this was happen. after the yeah. Trump election that happened. Yeah. So kind of gives you an idea. And one of the, uh, it's interesting, uh, one of the articles, I'll, or sentences I'll read from the article, more than two out of every three or two out of three middle schoolers couldn't see any valid reason to mistrust a post written by a bank executive arguing that young adults need more financial planning help. Nearly four in ten high school students believe, based on the headline, that a photo of deformed daisies on a photo sharing site provided strong evidence of toxic conditions near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in Japan. Sorry for butchering that. Even though no source or location was given for the photo. So it's just a picture of a daisy. And hey, this is over in the nuclear plant that basically kind of crumbled and started to fall apart in Japan. John, what are your thoughts on this? This is pretty it's, significant, no, it's, right? It, it may, I, back, I'll just tell a quick story. Back in 2012, mm -hmm. when Facebook was like, ramping up to where it wasn't just friends and everything and they start news articles and and like the ap started to figure out what facebook was and, and fox news and all that and when they, they started inundating you with like sponsored news they could pay to be on the sites and blah 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 mm -hmm. i remember a ton of conversations having with friends of mine at that time like they're inundating us so badly with news that we don't know is true because we're Facebook's a headline read. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I'm feeling drained or I'm having a great day or here's a picture of my family. Happy, happy, happy. And then they inundate it that mm -hmm. with, now you don't know what's, what's fake or what's real. And I think that's where everybody kind of caught that. Yeah. That we're not sure, you know, a, a lot of a lot of people we know do a ton of research now. We don't believe any headline. Oh, yeah. And I know a lot of people that don't care at this point, and they just go on with whatever. Like, they're doing their own thing, so they don't care. It but, really, yeah, when you're, when you're news sourcing, the headline yeah. is the worst thing to look for. Exactly. I mean, just think about that Miami Herald one that we just mm -hmm. talked about. I mean, that's a great example of like, oh, my God. How many of that percentage of that population thought, oh, my God, 901 deaths? Well, we could have been – think about just two noobs like us, you know. Yeah. Blah, 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 want to do a show to, to help people and talk to people and entertain people. We run with that. Yep. With egg on our face because we're headline grabbing. Yeah. Like, that doesn't – it's, it's – There is good it's news. It's a huge issue. It is, a, it is a huge issue. There is good news on this. A free Stan this is right from the article, quote, a free Stanford social studies curriculum that teaches students to judge the trustworthiness of historical sources has been downloaded three and a half million times. And beautiful. That's a great start. You know, and again, good. that's critically thinking. You don't just take the headline and just go like, oh, this is what this article says. Therefore, I believe it. You know, you kind of dig a little bit deeper it's, it's the same thing as we talked about with with uh back in the day with the with the hockey trade deadlines when espn didn't know anything about hockey they yeah. would they would run this ticker tape thing and it would be like let's just take the lindros trade back in the day when he yeah. was traded from quebec to philadelphia oh yeah I bet you if we were if we were you know following that right now mm. they got it wrong espn got it wrong local news got it wrong yep Everybody got it wrong for like a day and a half. Mm -hmm. He wasn't here. He was here. The Rangers sued somebody, and Money. then, they, but it, they were they went on the original report, mm -hmm. and all that came down to a miscommunication, quote unquote, uh, between Quebec, Philly, and the Rangers. So it was all Quebec, basically, that was throwing but, the monkey wrench into all of this. But how funny that. was that whole thing? It just shows you how news wants to be reported mm -hmm. instead of confirmed and then report it yeah there they'd, are rather other... get the they'd rather get the story out before they know it's real yeah this is really interesting because i wanted to get also your take on this too john because this mm -hmm. is your, your parent your dad this is right from the article quote parents can instill early a healthy skepticism about published reports vincent Absolutely. tran and his wife christina allow their three children ages 10 8 and 6 to research sports, games, and other topics that interest them by Googling or by asking Siri or Alexa. 
Uh, Mr. Tran, a web architect, blocks sites he considers inappropriate for his children and doesn't allow them to use social media, end quote. What are your thoughts yeah. on that as a father? I mean, I'm, I'm against I, my kids use social media. I'm against, I'm against most social media. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I'm not very active at this point on social media, but they, they, they do their own things, they're, but they're all critical thinkers. So yeah. I'm not really worried Maybe the youngest one. I'm the, he's not going to have a Facebook page. Yes. Yeah. Like he's not going to have a Facebook page or an Instagram or for a long time. But I, I have older kids. Mm. I have a 16 year old and two 19 year olds. Like, yep. They're already, they already, they're critical thinkers. I trust them. I trust mm. them enough to where we joke around about it all the time. We joke around about Snapchat. We joke around about, yeah. I have my own, you know, yeah. ideas about stuff. And I, I, I don't cope. I don't sugarcoat anything. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's just that's a little insight into how I, you know, talk and parent with them. And I know that social media sucks for everybody. Yeah. And I honestly, with this generation, with the generation of those three, the older ones, mm -hmm. I know social media sucks because they're not interested in it. There you go. Maybe I'd love like, to hear. Which yeah, I maybe love a little into, like Instagram's a happy place. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly has changed. You have one sure. of the kids that just popped up right there. He just called us. Oh, there you go. From earlier. <laughs> <laughs> love it. But I love this too. Uh, talking further a little bit about this article, which I really, uh, really love this. Quote Mr. Tran notices when they have trouble sorting facts from fiction, talking about his kids. And quote, we spend a good deal of time asking them where they get their information. He and his wife also ask them during family dinners about topics they, they've been exploring and hopefully challenging them to think, end quote. Yes, that's, I, I totally 100% agree with that. that they, forever what? increase, amen. Yes, I, I, <laughs> absolutely. When, when I sent this article over to you, I fell in love with this article yeah. when I read it. It popped you good, yeah. Yeah, it was, good. it was really good. Yeah, it really is amazing. It talks even further about like 88% of young adults regularly get use, news from Facebook. Ugh. Yeah, oh God. These risks, uh, this risks creating an echo chamber effect because social media tends to feed users uh, news items similar to those they've read before. Yes, yes. Which I love that because it's like sometimes, yeah, CNN sucks, you know, and that kind of deal. But that's where you kind of get a Wall Street Journal. That's where you kind of yeah. But also, also CNN does hit every once in a while. So Absolutely. don't like I don't I I try not to leave anybody out. I I personally. Use Google and DuckDuckGo mm -hmm. as a cross reference. Yes, that's really good. There are things that'll run on DuckDuckGo that won't run on Google, and there are things that'll run on Google that won't. Mm -hmm. If you can cross reference them, I, use more than one search engine. That's my greatest advice for research. Yeah. Use way more than one. I think I use. I think I use five at this point. That's this brilliant. Point. Yeah, don't yeah, be so I, beholden to your one news article. Yeah. Yeah, I need I this over and over and over again before I will even. Heck, I, I even remember doing. I will not send him anything that isn't quadruply checked at least. Heck, I even remember doing. You remember, like in high school, John? You remember when we were growing up back then? Knock on wood. Yeah, back, um, back then when we had to use the Dewey Decimal. When system. we had the Dewey Decimal system, right? <laughs> and then microfiche and all that kind of stuff. But, but what were you? But what were we doing? Right, we were Researching. gathering in as much information yeah. as possible. Books and books and books and books. Books and books and books. Just to write gather, and then form your own opinion. So that's really, that sets you up for success, getting as much information as you possibly Absolutely. can. So you're covering all the bases and okay, then you make the informed opinion. That's really. Or the uninformed opinion, because you could still read all those books and be Don Lemon. So. Well. Just a, just a shot. But I'm bum. Gotta love it. So. Why don't we move on to our third topic real quick? Um, you know, this is an interesting political piece. We'll throw up up, up here on screen. Biden yeah. tries to shift blame on Afghanistan, John. Yeah, of course he would. Of course, uh, he would. Yeah, of course, the used car salesman finally figured out, oh, wait a minute, I am actually selling Hugo, but I'm going to place the blame not on the buyer. I'm going to place the blame on the former administration. Yeah, I love that he blamed Trump and the Afghan soldiers at the same time <sighs> in, one, in one sentence. It's genius. We we did this last week already. You when you get when you go get a new job, everybody everybody has changed jobs in their life that is probably oh, yeah. watching this. 
this, or if you haven't, this is really good advice. Yep. You can get away with most owners and most companies for about two weeks blaming the other person that had the job before you for the shitty conditions. Yeah, I'd say maximum 90 days. Yeah, easy. If you got the right. Makes sense, right? I mean, if you don't have the support of the the company. 90 days is fine. 90 days is, yeah, legit. 90 days is fine. But 91 days and on, come on. Come on, dude. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) You've already replaced everything. Like, you've you've had a chance to review everything. Mm. Like, and this is this is what pisses me off about Biden. Yeah. You wrote a hundred million executive orders reversing everything that he did. So how is he still relevant? I don't understand. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a to use his it's a it's a it's a what did he say? Dog and pony soldier or whatever the hell mm-hmm. he said. That's what kind of argument this is. Uh-huh. This is one of those those or he's or he's looking at his watch you yeah, know the dover and it's like arguments that just it doesn't hold any weight now he's got a humongous credibility gap right now yeah. and uh, you know, of his own volition he only he only he only dug himself in this hole to begin with mm-hmm. and what do you do when you do that you either dig up being an idiot or you ask for help yes so it's either one of the two but only a piece of crap would say you know only that kind of a person would basically say, you know, the evacuation of the country of more than 120,000 people, a success, an extraordinary success, according to Politico, quoting the president. It's like, really? There's nothing. You basically change. pulled a Baltimore Colts in the middle of the night. And I, and, I, and I have, I literally had to say, there's videos popping up on the internet now of before the soldiers were forced to leave because they were forced to leave. Yeah. They were jumping in Black Hawk helicopters and tanks and Humvees, and they were breaking everything that they could break. Yeah, Not being non-American, they knew that yeah. if they left that stuff, because they weren't bringing that stuff with them. Yep. If they left that, it would be worse when, they, when they're going to be forced to go back. Because yeah. they're going to be forced to go back. That's oh, the yeah. thing that nobody, nobody is talking about. They're going back. No doubt about that. And I have no doubt about that. It's a set. It's a setup. It's an administrative state setup. Yeah, no doubt about that. And it, you know, it's like that's the big question for the future of the country. There, mm-hmm. really, at the end of the day, because the Taliban can talk all kinds of crap all they want, but we all know what's going to happen. Well, we know. We know they're a terror state. They're going to. Yeah. They're going to work with the people that we don't want them to work with because they attack us that's not good no. for america yeah exactly and it's but, not being against anything it's just the taliban has a different way of thinking in this world and that's fine if you support the taliban if you live in afghanistan and you want to live that way mm-hmm. you can't nobody can tell anybody how to live but what we can't do is strand people in a place where they don't want to be because of the new rule. Mm-hmm. That's my problem. With That's the, the big problem. Yeah. And the way, you know, of course, I talked to my father about it. And, you know, he had his very heated opinion, obviously, in regards oh. to that. Hey, as you can rightly imagine. His opinion's always welcome. And he's been there. His opinion's always welcome. He's been there. He's, he's been there. He has definitely. He more about it than we do. Yeah. Well, he has definitely visited Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. a couple different times and it literally was like he basically said this was not the fault of any of the soldiers this was practically like you're essentially going in there and in the dead of night you pulled a baltimore colts you yeah. left the afghanis to fend for themselves yeah and that wasn't essentially that what was happening idea. was whenever the taliban would pop up the idea would be you whack them all so you whack them back down basically with the afghans going out on foot with the Americans providing close air support. Yeah. Well, guess what? When what Biden you said, you know what? We're just pulling out of here. They just pulled out. No air support. Right over at that point with the Taliban. The Taliban had nothing to fear in that regard. So this is definitely on Biden and it will always be on him. You know, And he will have this stench throughout his entire life for yeah. the rest of his life. Um, you know, and he could try and spit it all he wants, like, you know, the used car salesman that he is. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, he will ultimately fail. You know, it's, it's just, not, that's, it's 
it's just the way he is, you know? It's ugly. Uh, his it vice is. president is calling for him to resign. Well, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> well, she wants to be president, so. Well, she's got her own sets of problems. Yeah. Laughing, yeah. laughing hysterically is not, is definitely one of them. I, it's definitely wrong. It's, you know? it's, the more I watch this, and, and, and thanks for even, you know, you know, bringing out that you talk to your dad about this, because that makes me feel a little bit better, because yeah. I know, I know the, the, the veterans that I talk to, they are furious they're about furious this. oh absolutely furious about this and everybody should be we should be more furious about this than anything else yeah yeah forget covid forget like you know the, yeah, the fact that he's a he's a this pisses of, you off if you're an american the fact that biden's a vaccine clown is irrelevant yeah. at this point yeah, yeah exactly it really you know he works for big business so the vaccine stuff is is easy peasy like he's he's a pusher he's a drug dealer that's what he is exactly let him try and fill their stupid quote or whatever the case may be but this this right here this is ugly yeah ugly this is why you support the troops no matter what the case is trucks black hawk helicopters they were all left behind and the soldiers you know other than the 13 that passed away unfortunately from a terror attack oh yeah when you were switching an airport, when you weren't supposed to switch an airport, because we could have got this done in a week. Oh yeah, I've heard that from everybody. Mm-hmm. I heard that from like the last four administrations. Actually, all said the same thing. Yep. If they would have kept that airport, this thing could have been done in a week to a week and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's coming. That's coming from everybody. Like yeah. that's a Trump administration. That's Obama. That was Bush forty three. Yep. And Bush forty three all said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Which is bizarre. Yeah, exactly. Bizarre. But I think we will end this by saying, you know, if I think that famous Obama quote, if you want something screwed up, give it to Joe Biden. Right? Use, <laughs> use the F word, and that is my favorite quote ever. <laughs> and I, I'll actually say the quote as as we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go on a tiny little break and bring back uh, a really good friend of ours to finish this. Uh, yeah. Matt will do that. No doubt. Um, but yeah, he literally was quoted. Um, I think it was by the AP and one other source I can't remember. He was whispering to Hillary Clinton and he said, if you want something fucked up, give it to Joe. <laughs> one of the greatest quips of a president ever <laughs> saying that. That was caught on audio. It's one of the greatest things you'll one ever One of the greatest hear. quotes ever. You know, I mean... I didn't like yeah. Obama all that much for his politics, but that right there was an exact perfect quote. Made me laugh. Made me laugh. Still makes, makes me laugh because he knew. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We all knew that. Absolutely. But, hey, no mean tweets. But, anyway, moving on. We're going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, and trust me, when we come back, it'll be much lighter hearted. It will be a review of the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, yes. the NFL's coming, John, within a yeah. week. Yes, Kick off. quickly, quickly. We're going to go through the Eagles' schedule with our good buddy Steve Murray. We're going to kind of just go over, like, some of the wins and losses that we've predicted. And really, amazingly, we all have the same record, but we all we arrived didn't. at it differently. <laughs> we didn't get there in the same way. It is really going to be amazing. A great discussion. So we'll, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit of Eagles. So for now, talk to you all later. Everybody, welcome back to Two Noobs Talking. Well, actually, we're adding a third noob. Mr. Steve Murray is with us, regular contributor to our podcast. Steve, we're happy to have you uh, here with us, and we're talking a little Sixers talk, uh, and also with the Eagles. So we're just going to launch right into this clip from the Mike Mincinelli show uh, that just occurred um, a few days ago regarding one Ben Simmons. And uh, this is a very interesting clip. Let's go ahead and play it. This thing, it just grows and grows and grows. Now, here's the problem that I have. The problem that I have is that now there's this national narrative that is shifting towards fans that are here are bad. That we, It's our problem. It's the Sixers' problem. It's our problem. Like, we messed the situation up with Ben Simmons. Do I have to remind people? Like, I'm listening to this Chris Broussard. 
And he has a report out there that Ben Simmons will go to any team in America except the Sixers. He'll go to 29 other teams. At Philadelphia is the only place he, he would not go. Now, you know what that does? That paints this narrative nationally to people that don't really know the inside, including Chris Broussard, by the way. It paints this narrative that we drive people away. We're so terrible that nobody can play here. Forgetting about the main factoid that this guy did not shoot a basketball for three-plus years that he was here. Did not shoot a basketball. This is now our fault. For criticizing a man that would not shoot a basketball, Philadelphia is now bad. Ah! <laughs> so we are he's, he's right <laughs> he's right there you go okay this 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 just gets up my my butt i hate it <laughs> well, it's now I'll, it's I'll now not. our fault mm. it's our fault that ben simmons doesn't want to play here anymore <laughs> okay <laughs> I don't want to hear that nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I've I've lived in Philly pretty much all my life. I've been to all kinds of sporting events. Mm-hmm. I've booed when appropriate. Okay. Nobody, nobody was booing Ben Simmons when he was taking foul shots in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. We were as encouraging as it could be. Oh yeah. And the coaching staffs that Ben Simmons has played for babied the hell out of him mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. including doc rivers up until after game seven and this is now our fault it, later on in the clip mike missinelli who i usually don't like because he's a total blowhard and i yes, hate uh, that was how you really feel <laughs> he actually makes a good point he's like what could we have done as fans nothing to make Ben Simmons shoot the basketball, which he has paid $200 million to do. Mm. Okay. Mm. What could we have done to make him shoot the basketball in the fourth quarter of game seven? Mm. I'm going, by the way, in case you didn't know, he didn't shoot the basketball in the fourth quarter of game six. He didn't shoot the basketball no. in the fourth quarter of game five. He no. didn't shoot the basketball in the fourth quarter of game four. He also played 82 games where he didn't shoot the basketball that often. <laughs> <laughs> Before even the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. All right, so so Ben doesn't want to play here anymore. Okay, fine, but don't be blaming us for that. Mm. I no, That's and I get that. Him. My problem with with the whole clip is, and Miss Nelly has to because he he works in Philadelphia. He doesn't work nationally. So see, national media is simple. Right? They shit on Philly anytime Philly comes up. It doesn't matter if he it would, no matter what it would be. Carson yep. Wentz gets traded. Santa gets brought up. Like that's it's it's automatic for ESPN or uh, Fox Sports or whatever it is. They literally the automatic narrative is that, and I think that's what pisses you off so much. <laughs> and it pisses me off too because I get it. I get it in just daily walking down the street. Oh, where are you like? Where are you from? I'm from Philly. Oh, you know those guys that throw snowballs at Santa Claus, like. Dude, you don't know anything about anything, so don't you know? Don't speak on it. I like to, I like to remind the audience that that happened sixty five years ago. Yeah. Moving but, on. But the thing that makes me angry about it is Miss Nelly's painting the same narrative against the media. Well, just to, ju- he's he's justifying his existence because Chris Broussard has an existence and made a comment. You know what I mean? It's like he literally just is he's painting the same narrative. It's just the local narrative against the national media. Eskin made a career on it. He's literally Eskin 101. Just fight against them. Angelo also bad. Did That's it too. all Missinelli does. Angelo but, did it too. Yeah. yeah, the crux of the fact is Ben can't shoot, and it's not the fans' fault. It's the Sixers' fault. We broke it down. We looked at the 16 draft. Ben was the only one there. Yeah. <laughs> like... We, we tried to figure out, well, how could the Sixers have done it better? We did this in pre-production last night. How could they have drafted a better player than Ben Simmons at this point? They mm-hmm. couldn't because he wasn't available. The sad part about all of this is the fact that he's such an elite defender. Mm-hmm. You made the point, John, last Elite last defender, great passer. 
great defender, great passer, and I think you equated him to like a Bruce Bowen of the Spurs from like you know the twenty ten. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. But in terms of elite defense, you know that kind of yes, deal, and yes. I elite, I tend to agree with you. I think he defender, is. I say. Okay. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. But the the issue with with Simmons was, and I liken this to like going all the way back to Stephen A, who I have problems with Stephen A for a yes. long time. Stephen A said, famously, that if Ben Simmons develops a jump shot, he's the greatest NBA player who's ever lived. And I'm like, whoa, 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 time out here. But that's irresponsible journalism. That exactly. Turns into, and turns into Chris Broussard telling us that it's our fault we did it. And then Mike Missanelli spinning a narrative that it's just, like, it's magical. And I, I'd also Missanelli like to point out to point. Broussard. This is a big point I want to also make out, too. And we, we didn't talk about this in brief, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Go to for it. Both of you. The idea that, oh, Ben wants to play anywhere else but Philly. I like to point out the New York Mets are having difficulties with their players, yeah. with people booing at them for their efforts. You think the Knicks fans are going to love Ben Simmons? No. Passing up a dunk in game no. seven? Seven of a playoff no, no, series? You're right. no, no, you're absolutely right. Like, No, I don't think any... I mean, if he goes the does Met no Memphis doesn't even exist anymore or do they? I don't. They know. do Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they do. Oh, it was that the Supersonics got stolen and yeah, they, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And they moved that other. Then they moved it. The, yeah, Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there were th- there was a bunch of stealing going on in the NBA. Um, <laughs> I don't even know half the teams. I just watch the Sixers because uh, <laughs> I don't actually care. There you uh, go. Yeah, the, but I think that the main point that I want to make about it is it's it's on Ben, and it's on the Sixers organization. Yeah, it's on it's on the general manager. It's on it like Steve said in pre-production. It's on Brett Brown, number one. Oh, 100 percent. Though Brett Brown's not even here, it's on Brett Brown because yeah. Brett Brown didn't even coach John B. Good. Yeah. It took JoJo a good three four years to develop his own game and having Doc there, I oh. think helped him tremendously. Doc, great, Doc clearly older than yeah. So let's not even compare Ben and Joel Embiid because Joel Embiid's a generational talent. Mm-hmm. You're I never agree. gonna see anything like this. Now, yeah. this is this is where I feel like the responsibility should be assigned. The Sixers, I agree, do share some of it. Not because they drafted him, because as you pointed out, <laughs> there was nobody else yeah. <laughs> to pick yeah. at number one. Mm-hmm. Okay. To mm-hmm. you know, you 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 said, oh, Jalen Brown's good. Jalen Brown is not who you're running the process yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. Okay? And he would be a nice player to have, but he's not a process uh no. superstar. No. Okay. Yeah. Good player though. Like him watching him. Right. So they had to draft him. You had to make sure he took the developmental steps he needed to do to become the elite player worthy of being the number one pick yeah. and they haven't done it. And evidence is not just, he won't, he can't shoot. I think it's more, he won't shoot. It um, won't shoot. I, 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 from what we were talking about, I, he can shoot. He just won't shoot. He won't shoot. Okay. Mm-hmm. He won't shoot. And even more than that, I think this year's playoffs really exposed him as somebody who shrinks when the spotlight gets big. Yeah, I think so. I think I don't uh, think he's a he, big and that's a crying shame. Yeah, it is. But, but, but that's also not in everybody's DNA. Yeah, like just look at well, who's the point guard of the Hawks that that rises. Oh, the, the, Trey Lance. Yeah, Trey yeah. Young. Trey, Trey Young. Trey Young. He he literally from high school rises the occasion. Yeah, we've seen it on every level with him. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. He's that's in his DNA. Okay. I felt the same way about Kemba Walker years ago. Agreed. You know, in the Big Big East tournament, he basically took UConn and said, you're coming with me. We're going to the NCAA tournament. No, you're absolutely right. We talked about, uh, Steve talked about Danny Breer. Yeah. It's in his DNA. It's in Joel Embiid's DNA. Mm -hmm. It's in Seth Curry and his brother's DNA to be big time. Yeah. It's not in Ben's DNA. It's not, and that's and that's, that's, that's not even shame. Ben's fault. Yeah, that's no, just the way it is. It's that not, more but... goes on the that more goes on the Sixers. I would say if you're interviewing a guy and you know that he doesn't rise to the occasion, that's well, on I, that's I, more on the organization than it is the person. Because what if Ben wants to be? This is I just think, hypothetically. What if Ben wants to be a big game player but can't? I think you can. 
I, I don't, I, I agree. Some of it is DNA, mm-hmm. but I do think some of it also it's is hard work. Yeah. It's hard work and effort. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If no, you want to be, that. if you want to be the go-to guy, I think you can, if you work at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, this is, this is where I assign the blame to Ben, mm-hmm. which is, I don't think he wants to be that guy. Mm. There were whispers coming out, even when he was drafted, that he's not as motivated a guy to play basketball as some might think. Yeah. LSU, uh, and famously, I, I remember think, that. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he's proving it. I, I don't think he's doing I, – I think he just wants to live the life out in L.A. I don't think he wants to be the, Which greatest, again is bas- like, okay. the greatest basketball player in the league. I don't think I, he and wants And you know to what? Be. I can't hate him for that, but then you probably shouldn't play in a place with Philly. So the Sixers should probably you vet that out a little bit. Exactly. But here's here's my question to both of you, and I'll just throw this out there. Do like okay, I agree the fact that if you're going to draft, you know, and, and save all these draft picks or whatever to get the number one overall pick, mm-hmm. and you're not sold on Ben Simmons. Do you trade down? I, I mean, that's a classic what if, but you at that point you suck so bad you needed anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think you really did to put ass in the seats. You needed anything, mm-hmm. and Ben was the flavor of the month. At that point, he was all you it, know, all conference. He there looked, were he looked good in the tournament, mm-hmm. doing were, ben stuff. Not he wasn't shooting. Just so everybody knows, like he wasn't shooting in college. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Wasn't, oh yeah. He wasn't shooting in college. He was he was playing bully ball. He was playing brown brown ball. Mm-hmm. He was taking the ball and putting his 6'10", 200-pound frame on younger, smaller guys mm-hmm. running completely over them. Mm-hmm. I don't think... That's another one of his problems with the NBA. He's playing with men. Yeah. Good. Steve. I agree. I agree that you, if you're not sold on somebody, number one, you trade down. Um, but I don't think there was a point where they weren't not sold mm-hmm. on him. Mm-hmm. But um, also, I don't. He think had he had the size, he had the talent. Mm-hmm. I think the thought process was, we can develop him to where he needs to yeah. be. You can develop him into a a player mm-hmm. that can accentuate your team. Mm-hmm. Which that's what I thought they were doing. Like he was not going to be the part. I kind of saw him as playing four positions. Right, mm-hmm. he would guard. So he would guard the elite player because he's he's a damn good defender. Absolutely, he's gotten better as he's. That's what he's been working on because he's gotten way better when he got in. What yeah. I thought is he'd play the two on the defensive end, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. But he could also or the one they would find. Yeah, they would find the matchup. Yeah, because if, if Harden's playing, he's definitely gonna play the one. Mm-hmm. But if he's playing, you know, blah, 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 or if you're playing, when he played against Giannis uh, during the regular season, he was dead up on him, right. mm-hmm. which was good. Mm-hmm. That's what he needed. What I always thought that he was going to be is he was going to be this, this spread player that we never saw before. So when they went with a small lineup, you would put Ben with JoJo, and they would be able to just alley and and Duncan and have fun playing as the big guys. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest problem – with Ben's career was Brett Brown. Oh, I think he set him no, back. Yeah. I, he's not inventive enough. He's he's Greg Popovich light. The dude can't think outside the box. Mm-hmm. Like he he literally promotes the same San Antonio Spurs team over and over again. I don't have a seven foot guy next to a seven foot guy next to a Bruce Bowen defender. Mm-hmm. San Antonio sucks. Mm-hmm. Cause they literally have the same team every year with different players. Mm-hmm. I think that probably hurt his growth a little bit. Mm-hmm. If he had yeah. docked his whole career from, from infancy, it could be different, but it I don't could think be, but come back at this point, it, it could be, but doc, I, I, I forget if I said it in pre-production or if I said it already here, you already doc, said it. doc spent the year defending him. But that's only yeah. but that's only one year. You got to give him. So if we got to recreate him. Mm-hmm. Doc needs at least three, four years. You can't change that guy in one year. The only issue with that, John, is now he wants out. But that's what the national media is saying. Yeah. 
Well, until no, Ben I mean, comes out, until Ben comes out and says Philly, I'm leaving. Right. I, I'm not believing anything that comes out of the media. You know okay. that. I'm, yeah. The yeah. the the other thing too is, and I I agree with you. Brett Brown was a big problem, but I I think also. Well, Ben was the other big Ben's, problem. Ben's the, the other big problem. Were, uh, and his, I had the benefit, I told you guys yesterday, I had the benefit of seeing uh, the day after uh, the clip I sent you, I watched uh, Charles Barkley was on mm -hmm. the next show. Mm -hmm. And I always, I love listening to Charles because he, oh, yeah. he, Charles, has, he Charles has, is the guy you need to listen to. Yeah, he's he's got great, like, Chuck. stories, great takes on everything. Yeah. Um, he actually, he said that we, we in Philly should have been harder on Ben. Yeah, um, but But Ben's... Ben's reaction when it was like, well, you know, you weren't shooting the ball in the in the fourth quarter of any of these games. Ben's reaction was, well, I was doing other stuff. And Charles Barkley's reaction to that was such a, such a but that's what such was, a reactionary. All right, he goes, he goes um to uh who's the uh, Tyrone Johnson, I think is the mm -hmm. guy's name who mm -hmm. works yeah, with Mike. Yeah, great. By the way, he's great. Yeah, he is. Anybody awesome. ever yeah, when good. he gets his own show, he's gonna be the best show in Philly. <laughs> yeah. I love that kid. Yeah, yeah, he's good. That kid knows um, stuff. But he goes, he goes, Tyrone, he goes, um, tell me what Ben's other numbers were for those games. Mm. Right. So he reads off all the stats, not just points. Mm -hmm. He averaged eight points a game in that seven game series against the Hawks. That's okay. okay if you are doing other things. Well, Charles's point was, okay, so what were the what were the assists? I think the assists worked out to like seven a game. Okay, what were the rebounds? I think the rebounds were like six a game, or the rebounds and assists might have been close. Charles is like, all right, if you're not going to put up double digits and points and you're going to say, oh, I, it's because I was doing other stuff, you better have double-digit assists and double-digit rebounds to go along with it. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. he's absolutely right because you, it, we're, we're not going to get, like, deep into the stats, but offensive-defensive rebounding, knowing JoJo can't offensively rebound, Ben should probably be leading the team in offensive rebounds if you're doing other things, mm -hmm. including your defensive rebounds, including your assists, Including your steals. Because if you're an elite defender, you should at least have two or three steals. Yeah. Well, if you're an elite defender, you're having five or six. Or yeah. at least causing, I know it's not a, I don't think it's a stat, but he does do this. But I'm just saying, like, if yeah, you're yeah. in the playoffs, you should be causing five to six turnovers a game if no you're doubt. averaging eight points in the playoffs. Exactly. I, exactly. I know this from playing adult league hockey with these gentlemen. I'm <laughs> shitty at stuff. But I was good at other stuff, and I would lay on the ground before I would allow. You know, I'd block six shots a game because I couldn't score, but I could stop something. <laughs> it was my face or not, it didn't matter. You know, they're laughing because they know what I'm. I'm saying, like, exactly. you, you were really good at the penalty box too. Beyond. You can't just. I couldn't just went back. Oh, I made one good pass. You know, that's okay. Good, we lost two one. You know that one, yeah, yeah. The one goal, right? What did you do so, for the other goal? Exactly. So to if just get back hit. to the to the point I wanted with this clip was, um, oh, so you know he wants to leave Philly because nobody wants to play in Philly. They're too hard on on their mm. on their That's star players. Bullshit. That's ask bullshit. ask Allen Iverson. Yeah. Ask Bryce Harper. Ask yeah. Bryce Harper. Ask yeah. Bryce, Bryce Harper. Harper. Yeah. Ask JT Riamuto. Yeah, they Absolutely. love it here. They're staying for a while. Oh yeah. They love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Alan Iverson. Alan Iverson. I bring up Alan Iverson because he mm. he was oh. technically speaking from a basketball standpoint, one of the most maddening players I think I've ever seen. Yeah. He would jack up 40 shots a game. Yeah. But he was fun to watch. He oh. was exciting to watch. He gave you energy every time up and down the floor. Yeah. He literally, he literally, when he was Open inducted feet. into the Hall of Fame. Mm. like that's what that's what i was like you know what that yeah because i, I could disagree with half his game mm -hmm. but you know what yeah he was absolutely the only reason that i would turn on the sixers game during that time single absolutely. greatest reason for the yes. rebirth of that organization especially you're coming off the 90s and we all know the all two of oh, us all three of us really know oh, how, how bad Harry? they were yeah, how bad they were, and he was. Can we all, can we all remember the Charles Barkley trade? The only guy I remember is Tim Perry from it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, so I, 
Iverson, when he was traded, yeah, I think I think it was at that point it was like it was he had to go. Yeah. It was time. But he came back, if you yeah. remember. It was only for a short while, but he yeah. came back. And he was like, I missed playing for you guys. But by yeah. the way, he's still back. You know, he has a seat from Oh yeah. Bro. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's still back. That's great. Yeah. I th- so I so ask want, ask Chris Broussard. Other, yeah. Ask Chris Broussard. If we're so hard on people and we're so tough to play for, yeah. why did Allen Iverson like shed tears of joy when he came back here? Yeah. Okay. Why did Bryce Harper sign a 13 year deal to Dude, play here? The, yeah. Okay. Why do why do the why does every single almost why every does Pat single Burrell come back? settle here yeah. when they retire? Exactly. Why does Pat Burrell come back every chance he gets to be yeah. in front of the fans? Exactly. Absolutely. We were harder on Pat Burrell than we'd ever been on Ben Simmons. <laughs> exactly. Ryan Howard. Yeah. We oh, were God. harder on Ryan Howard than yeah. we were on Ben Simmons. Yeah. And Howard loves us. Yes. You know? And yeah. we love Ryan Howard. I mean, yeah. and the best part is we. We overly love Chase Utley. He doesn't come back. Uh, <laughs> think about that. Well, he loves California. That's the thing. He loves California. And he's a California kid. I love, yeah, I love exactly. Yeah. I think I think that's why that's why people don't understand when we boo our home. You know, when we boo like Sidney Crosby, it's because we hate his guts. Yeah. But you know, when we boo our own players, I think it's usually one of two reasons. Either one, there's a lack of effort or a perceived lack of effort, mm-hmm. or two they're just they're doing the same thing over and over again expecting not, a different result yeah expecting a different result and not changing <laughs> yeah. it. and that frustrates us exactly we're not booing them because we hate them we're booing them because yeah. we're trying to get a message across hey pat, pat burrow was the example i gave last night and i'm gonna do it right now pat straight <laughs> They are never going to call that a ball. Exactly. Exactly. I can, exactly. I, let, let me let me take you into a little thing, this Pat Barrow thing, because I think this is what encompasses Philly in 100% of what we're talking about. So do you guys remember the DVD that they put out of the 08 World Series? Mm-hmm. The greatest part of that DVD was when they had footage of Jimmy Rollins going into the tunnel when Pat Burrow was coming up for that pinch hit. Mm. And he was taking swings. And Jimmy was berating him mm. in a way that only Philly fans understand. Mm. And he was scared, like, this ain't, but where is number five? Where was he? Like, he's, yeah. getting, he was getting in his it's, kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. To hype him up. And what, what did he wait? He goes out and he hit, but that's, that's, like, we want your best effort because if we were doing it, we would, we would want the better. best effort. Yeah. Most people from the Northeast, and this is not just Philly. No. This is this is Virginia to New York, kind of. It's we're hard. We yeah. will put we the work extra hard. effort in. We will mm-hmm. stay late. We will work hard. Mm-hmm. And when we, the Knicks fans, Phillies fans, Flyers fans, Rangers yeah. fans, we're all very similar. We're not. We're not all exactly the same. Mm-hmm. We're very similar. To if you're not going to put the effort in, why am I wasting my time with you? Yeah, wasting money too. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Why? And that's I think that's I, I think that all encompasses Ben's this Ben Simmons thing. Yeah. Half the half the Philadelphia doesn't think he's working hard. The other half has already got, like I've given up on the fact that he can shoot. I don't even want him to shoot because mm. I don't think he can. Mm. But there's there's a bunch, but there's also a bunch of other things in between. There's yeah. it's it's the perfect storm that everybody's at fault. Yeah. Oh, and but I was good on Mike Missinelli for defending Philly fans, yeah. but not good on Mike Missinelli for totally painting the narrative backwards. And just <laughs> I was I forgot I was supposed to point out um, I was I was a Ben Simmons defender mm. for the longest yeah. time, so and I'm I've not been, like I've been shitting on Ben from the beginning. Yeah. So. That, that's just to give people a, like a clarification of it. Like Steve coming in hot with like the Ben, 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 Ben. <laughs> and I'm like defending Ben. It's not actually that way at all. Cause no, exactly. I've been yelling and screaming at the TV for the last umpteen years. Mm. About no, when, how I want Ben to be better. When and all a lot of his flaws, but I think I, like I said to Steve earlier, I think I conditioned myself. He sucks at that. Don't do that. <laughs> when when the rumors started flying early last season that they were contemplating trading him as a package for Harden, hmm. I was like, what are they doing? That's, yeah, that's me too. a horrible no, me idea. Too. Exactly. Mm. I, like, I wouldn't trade him for James Harden. No. Then. Uh, then. Now? 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. but you know, hindsight twenty twenty with that. Well, yeah. One, yeah. one thing but, I so, will... Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead. So just to so just to make clear, yeah, because I'm not one of these people who shit on him all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was all on board with Ben Simmons for years. Mm -hmm. It was this playoff series where I think he got exposed as somebody who shrinks from the spotlight and doesn't sound like a guy who wants to fix that problem. Yep. That's oh, now why I've kind of soured on him. Yeah, and, no doubt about and, that. And just as the final point for me is mm -hmm. to just match Steve's point is look at a dude like Bryce Harper in August. Yeah. Just for the fit. Red hot. Like, dude, his slugging spent percentage is off the charts. charts. His, yeah. his aggressive base running we haven't seen since Pete Rose. Like, yeah. this is a dude that is right. They're two behind. Yeah. And they don't have the talent to they, play with they, Bryce. They do not have the talent. Yeah. At all, they they do not. They should not be there. They and it's be, number three yeah. that's carrying them. Yeah, exactly. It's mm -hmm. that aggressive. That that's what Philly wants. I just thought I would make that point of if if you're confused on what we're talking about, just yeah. look at Bryce Harper's August. That's what we want from every single yeah. player in Absolutely. Philly all the time. Well, all I, the time. that's what we expect from well, when the, the no, star when, players. Yeah, when the yeah. lights come on. That's what I'm when saying. When the I'm lights come on, on. If, if you're a star player. We expect you to do that. Do that. <laughs> Two okay? for four, three for four. Yep. yep. If you're, we're not going to ride, you know, the the utility infielder. No. The same way we no, would that ride. Freddie Galvis does it. He had a home run in the beginning of the game, and I I was eating dinner when he did, and I was like, Yeah, Freddie could care less about what Freddie did for the rest of the game, but good job. <laughs> you know? but that's what I'm saying. Like Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper tried to stretch, and then I'll give you a real Philly moment, mm. just to just to with Ben Simmons, of being frustrated with Ben Simmons. Bryce Harper literally tried to stretch a double in the Arizona game mm. where it wasn't needed. It could have been injury. It, it was not needed. It was a single. You scored a run. You didn't need to stretch it into two. In the regular season, that's a Philly boo moment because you mm. don't waste an out. Yeah. But when you're putting numbers up like that, we give you. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Good try, kid. Yeah. Not... I wasn't so upset about yeah because he's putting that effort in all the time. All the time. It's max yeah. effort. That's what with that I think that's what we're trying to Yeah, hundred percent. Two things I'll say before we move on. One, I think Mets fans are completely on a separate planet. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I agree with them the in this instance. I hate the Mets and I than I more than I hate the Cowboys. Yeah. And I yeah. lived in Dallas for a year. Yeah, exactly. I hate the Mets. The Mets are terrible. Dallas. Yeah, the Mets are terrible. Uh, and number two, um, really, Bryce Harper to me, when I saw him play, it was against, I think it was Milwaukee, like the first year that he came. Mm -hmm. He went 0 for 4. Mm -hmm. But, damn it, that 0 for 4 was the best 0 for 4 effort I'd ever looks, seen out of a baseball great. player in this town. Like, that's the kind of talent. And he loves it here. He absolutely loves the city of Philadelphia. So that's what I'll, we'll end it on that. How about that? We'll just well, go I'll there. hear John Cruck, I think said it best in yeah. whatever speech that was. It's like, if, if you didn't, if you felt like it was, I, I don't remember the exact quote. He said something to the effect of if, um, if you didn't play here, if you didn't want to play here, it's because you didn't have the guts to succeed here. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. No, and he, and he, no, Beautiful Cruck said. is, and that's why he's, the greatest color and analyst I've seen in decades. This is low. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. He's so good. Yeah, he's he's good. so good at painting the moment. No doubt. But we love guys like that. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt about that. So let's talk a little Eagles, gents. Uh, to wrap this whole episode yeah. up, um, you know, obviously NFL coming right around the corner, not far. Um. You know, we had a very interesting pre-production meeting on the Eagles, of course. Uh, first of all, let's just talk generally. Nick Sirianni, brand new coach, coming in, obviously. Thank you for pronouncing his name because I didn't know it until this moment. There you go. Well, I knew he came what I do around here, John, is the host of Two News. I, you know, I do a little research you, you on this. You do good work. Thing. Thank you. you. Um, but Nick Sirianni, brand new coach, uh, the Eagles replacing Doug Peterson. Doug, we loved you, but I mean, I don't know what the heck you were Over doing the last few th three, four years. But this is a very interesting transitional time, I think, for the Eagles, gents. Um, you know, brand new coach, 
we have Jalen Hurts as a starting QB. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we have like a few returning cast of characters from the 17 championship run. What are what are your thoughts? I'll start with Steve. What are your thoughts on the Eagles heading into the season? Um, and what do you expect um, you know, for the team to perform at? Overall? I mean, I a new a new head coach, uh, an unproven starting quarterback, uh, you, I I can't expect the moon. Um I will say from what I've seen of of Nick Sirianni, mm-hmm. I like him. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's, I think he's got great energy. He's got, I love his competitiveness. Um, Mm -hmm. I think he's, he's got good ideas. I think he, he's got a good pulse on his players. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what he does. Um, I I think, I think he could do well. Um, and I, it's, I, you know, I would say the same, I would hope the same for every coach that comes in, but when you have a guy who's, who's, it's his first gig, you never know. And I, I, yeah. It seems to me like he's got a good head on his shoulders. Yeah, oh, no, no I, doubt about I, that. I totally agree with that. Yeah. What about a, what about your what are you looking forward to, and what do you what do you what scares you? Hmm. Uh, I, what scares me is the potential for injuries, just because it's it's killed us the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Um, with as many as we've had, and nobody's getting uh, any younger. Yeah. From that group, especially like the offensive line. Yeah, you lose Brandon Brooks, the the, the run game's over. Like, yeah, right. Like last year, no doubt. So, so the, I'm always worried about the injuries, especially now we've got an extra game uh, to to play through. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just look. I'm just looking forward to see the young guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to see. Uh, I want to see. Um, you know, I want to see Jalen Hurts how he does with kind of a full sort of off season. Mm-hmm. under his belt um i want to see the uh <laughs> i'm planking totally on his name it's, i'm getting old now it's all downhill after 40 uh, <laughs> the, re- the receiver we just drafted first round oh, uh, oh yeah Devontae, Devontae, smith. Devontae smith Devontae yeah. smith that's it thank yeah. you yes i'm really looking forward to seeing him it's not and not just because he's on my fantasy team uh <laughs> i'm looking i, I want to see how i want to see how he does because he's yeah. you know he the the thing that seems different to me from from other receivers we've drafted in the past was the report was he can catch anything. Yes. Uh, yeah. So they, not only is he fast, but he he's got hands yeah. to go with it, which is yeah. a nice thing to have. Absolutely. Um, and and honestly, I'm looking. For, I, I I heard uh, Zach Ertz's um, press conference the other day. He, he seems like he's going to be back this year, which is. I nice. think your point earlier. Steve kind of echoes that. I think Ertz comes into this really with a chip on his shoulder, and he is really fired up. He's, he's sold with what Sirianni is basically selling him, and you know the the new ideas. And you know, it's like he admitted in his press conference he was like first time in years that he's been truly healthy. And um, you know, I think you saw it was interesting because you you rewind the clock a little bit back to the end of the month, end of the season against Washington they lose the game and it's like they're four and twelve and it's kinda of like oh it sucks and he's sitting on the bench by himself. He's probably thinking like this is it, I'm done. Mm-hmm. And you know, he has a very contentious offseason, but he sticks with it and the team sticks with him. Yeah. yeah. That's huge. You know, and it's like they know his importance and it's like, okay, he's coming back now. We'll have to see how his season um, you know, rebounds and what he does. Uh, in in that regard, but yeah, I think it's it's very interesting to see. Absolutely, what's going on. the, the John, uh, what are the, your thoughts there, bud? The greatest thing that I'm looking for, like I'm so hyper focused on this offense mm-hmm. with getting uh, with getting uh, Dickerson from uh, Alabama. Hopefully, he'll plug in mm-hmm. somewhere later in the year and be like this massive protection for Jalen Hurts. That's what I'm I'm praying for. He could be the center later. You know, Kelsey's still there, but. Mm-hmm. I, th- that's what worries me about the lines. But what I'm looking forward to is the speed of having a guy like Boston Scott and Miles Sanders mm-hmm. coming out of a backfield where you have Devontae Smith and Jalen Rager, which I don't know who's faster, but I, I've watched Jalen Rager a lot more than I've watched Devontae Smith. And I'm a huge Rager fan. He played at TCU, mm-hmm. which is in Fort Worth, if people don't know. My wife's a huge uh, Horn Frog fan. So I watched every Saturday game of 
Jalen Rager throughout his college career, and I love the dude. Hmm. So I can't wait crosses and and just length and making like Sirianni has this concept of just speed that I'm super excited about. Mm -hmm. But I'm also definitely afraid, like I said, about the lines and the secondary is pretty awesome. I kind of, I'm a big fan of the secondary, but I'm afraid the death of the linebackers. Oh yeah. It kind of just goes. I think it's pretty much like um, Singleton and that's it for the linebackers. It's got like, Where's everybody I mean, there, else around here? There's some skill there that we've yeah. seen special teams wise and, and moving throughout injuries last year, but I'm, that, I'm underwhelmed, hmm. but yeah. maybe he knows football more than I, he's a football coach. I'm not. So I'll just oh, kind of leave it at that. I'm looking forward to the speed and the, the secondary big time. Yeah. I'm looking forward to an actual commitment to a running game. There you go. There you go. I mean, wouldn't that be the greatest thing ever? Because isn't that why we fell in love, love with Doug? Yeah, well, yeah. We fell in love with Doug yeah. because he ran the ball. Well, yeah, but then we fell out of him because he stopped running the ball. He stopped exactly. Running. He started passing the ball too much. That, so that's easy. So we, uh, Sirianni runs the ball. We I mean, it's love, amazing. They're saying running, that you know, Westbrook, really. Brian Westbrook was openly admitting, I think, on a uh, you know show, uh, you know, he thinks 60-40 run for the, for the offense. If that's the case, yeah, but, but, all for but it. Does the, my only question for the Eagles is, I, I totally would believe that. Mm-hmm. You, got, you got Miles Sanders and Boston Scott. Like, yeah. you can run the ball mm-hmm. 60, you know, 60% of the time. Mm-hmm. But does Jalen Hurts' arm change the coach? That's good. That's a great question. The ball just a little quicker than, than past quarterbacks, we'll say. Mm-hmm. 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 And I'm yeah, talking like Ertz, Goddard. I'm not t- just talking about the receivers. Yeah, it, that could be the downfall of this Eagles team, mm-hmm. and that's what scares me. Because if you fall in love with Hertz's arm, because Hertz isn't as accurate as everybody wants him to be, and he's yeah. not as he's not as polished as everybody wants. He he doesn't have. But boy, could he chuck it deep? Yeah, he doesn't have the poise. But his arm, yeah. you can fall in love with real quick. Because oh yeah. He gets that ball on people. Oh yeah, that's where Sirianni has to show the restraint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think he's, I think he's the kind of guy who could. Hmm. I'm I'm hoping so because that's the one thing. Like, because that was my thing with Jalen Hurts at the end of the year when they put him in mm-hmm. with Wentz. I fell in love with that arm, and you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> I watch every like I fell in love with that arm. Exactly. Well, that's why you're sitting there and you're not coaching a team. He. You know? man. But he just, but I don't want, I don't want the team. I don't want everybody to fall in love with that because yeah. that's, it's a mistake. Yeah. We've got, well, we've look, got... look, look, when I'm, when I'm coaching my Tecmo Super Bowl team. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I pretty much throw it every down unless I'm the Buffalo Bills. See, but, see, that's, <laughs> but that's also hilarious because when I play Madden, dude, I run probably more than the Chicago Bears. I'm kind of with <laughs> you there, Johnny. Yeah. I like a good run game. Yeah. That's because in Madden, you can't pass. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh, their passing is terrible. <laughs> this is all old world Madden talk right now. <laughs> we can't in the new Madden. No, no. You know the best was back in uh, Super Nintendo Madden '93. Yep. Yeah, that was one of the if best games set, ever. If you set your defense quickly, yep. you would break your huddle, and then you could go in and start smacking people in the offensive huddle. <laughs> And as long as you, as long as you didn't get carried away and you got back across the line of scrimmage before they set up, you you didn't get a penalty. Oh, nice, good job, EA. that's good just job, fantastic. EA. But let's go ahead then and share, uh, John, our thoughts on yes. the Eagles' win loss record. And very interesting. All three of us believe that the Eagles will go nine wins, eight losses. No, we don't agree this often. Which is very interesting, but all of us got to very differing points on where the nine wins came from, and all of us had different. Steve has a four loss losing; it has a four game losing streak in there, but yet comes out with a nine and eight with a four game winning streak towards the end of the season. But we'll break this down real quick. Steve with the lone win in in Atlanta, um, which is interesting to start the season. Of course, John and I both believe that. The Falcons will lose. Or they'll lose that game to the Falcons. That's yes, just because yes. I'm smarter than you two guys. Yes, yes, yeah. Agre- agreed. But I'm just saying, my only. Uh, all right, if you want my, if you want my reason, 
Go for that. it. It's because Atlanta sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and my reason is Jalen Hurts took how many snaps, Matt? Ten. Uh, ten. Yeah, grand total of ten snaps in the preseason. That's that's literally my only. That's Will they make it close. I would second that. By Look, me. that's a good point. But yeah. where is Julio Jones now? Exactly. That's another great counterpoint. Absolutely. Yeah. Out um, of town, basically. basically. Out of town. <laughs> yeah. the, there's no Julio Jones. So, which was the only real reason to pay attention to the Falcons. The Falcons are crap. Yeah. I, I I understand that, but but I don't know. Yeah, and, we'll see. Jalen Hurts. Be interesting too. We got a Dallas Monday Night Football game, of course. John, of course, going with the win. They always beat him in Dallas, and that's the only reason I picked. It. There you go. Yeah, in that regard. Yep. Yeah. Um, I've been to a couple of those games. They they went the floor with them in Dallas and then lose at home. Yeah, exactly. Um, the Carolina one was very interesting, Steve. With the with the loss in Carolina, of course, a part yeah. of that four game losing streak. John and I with a victory. Uh, Steve, your thoughts on why the Eagles would lose in Carolina? It just that, that just seems Carolina in and of itself just seems like one of those teams where mm-hmm. you probably should expect them to win, but mm-hmm. they're going to beat us. And it could be like a last second play or something. Fluke play Plus or you something got like that. Yep. you got you got you're looking ahead at Tampa Bay in 3 days. Yeah, the, the defending Super Bowl champions, and you're just coming off a game against Kansas City, which I think they're going to lose horrifically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just Carolina just seems like a team that maybe gets taken too lightly or mm-hmm. whatever, and it just it just has the feel of one of those games. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. For oh sure. no, totally agree, Matt. You, your win was basically just borderline too. Yeah, um, it was pretty much like a like coin flip. They were yeah. going to speak it out and then get beat by Tampa anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, my thought process really with Carolina, that is a true coin flip. It could go either way. Um, you know, I think I agree with that. for me, it's like it could be a last second field goal that could win it for us. I don't think we go in there and win by 10. No. You know, I think they're they're just on that fringe. Three at of most. Like, yeah. Three at most. If it be being betting man, three at most. I think. You, you, that just seems like one of those games where like you come down to the last play and Christian McCaffrey is going to beat one of our low yeah. paid linebackers yeah agreed agreed no i totally. totally agree with that yeah um all of us of course uh what i found very interesting all of us agree on the fact that detroit is a loss for the eagles yeah uh well, my well, rationale well, in that in vegas and uh loss in tampa bay we yeah talked it... about travel being the biggest thing the biggest thing that's probably it's interesting because it's like you're coming back off of vegas and it's like you gotta go back on the road to, to detroit something about the Detroit Lions every time we play them like yeah. everyone in the NFL beats the Detroit Lions except for the Eagles the Eagles unless, cannot beat the Lions to save their lives unless it's Rodney Pete in the playoffs yeah team. exactly yeah, yeah. exactly it's like, <laughs> it's like the only time like how does that happen I don't understand that um the Chargers were a, a very much of a I think a coin flip toss for all three of us I, I think, think so. coming yeah, absolutely you know Steve of course with the loss there um denver flip side the only John. reason i had the loss is because they had the win with the chargers so that's <laughs> so you're kind of okay really yeah. quickly. i had i had the loss with the chargers just because I, th- I feel like the chargers are a year ahead of where we want to be and i or I where totally we are now agree, i totally agree with that and if i gave the chargers a loss i would give them a win at denver it's just a flip-flop kind of, of a flip of a coin yeah, i have them of course both flop, winning like, those not, two games i don't think they're going to lose as 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 consistently yeah that's my basically my whole point with this. Yep. I have the win in Denver because Denver has no quarterback. Yes. Yeah. Yes. As proved, obviously, with the COVID pandemic, they didn't have a quarterback to field. You know, that kind of a deal. So it's kind of like, well, who is their quarterback? Which is either. which is completely ironic given who's in the front office. Which yeah, is exactly. Yeah, ex- well, he so, went all in for Peyton. I mean, that was the whole thing with him. Yeah, and you know, yeah. just get the Super Bowl. There's but. a there's a great uh there was a great uh meme that ESPN ran back then. Just talking about John Elway real quick mm. is when T- Tim Tebow had that breakout season. He called Peyton Manning personally and was like, "Bro, save me." <laughs> <laughs> that, that literally was why Peyton Manning went to Denver because he was oh, like, I, "I can't do this I'm, Tebow thing." <laughs> what I'm hearing is John Elway sold his soul to for Peyton Manning to come and win him that Super Bowl. Yeah. 
uh, and he's been paying for it ever since. With uh, oh yeah, absolutely. But that 100%. dude, that, meme, that the meme that ESPN put out that year when Peyton signed, I, it it will stick in my brain forever. forever. It's not only on the phone with Peyton. It's like help me. <laughs> That's great. I can't, I can't do this Tebow thing for two years. So after the Saints game, which we all have a loss on, yeah. uh, got to explain that one since that, it's a yeah, that. Read. Uh, it's a Sean Payton thing with me. He, it's a Sean Payton thing, too. He's out of the Eagles all the time. It doesn't matter agree. if Drew Brees is there or not. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's just a better coach. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. If he coached the New England Patriots, we'd talk to, we would talk about him like Bill Belichick, but he coaches the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. And we all we talk about is Drew Brees. Now Drew Brees is gone. Maybe we'll start to see Payton's actual – how good of a coach he is. Yeah. It will be interesting to see in that regard. The final six games, of course, the Eagles have the bye week really late, week 14. But what I find very interesting, Steve has the Eagles going 5-1 and one in yep. the final six games of the season. Yep. I'll get your question, on because I have a question for you on that, uh, Mr. Murray. Uh, of course, John, I'm 4-2 and two mm-hmm. in the stretch run. Uh, I have the Eagles losing to the Redskins outright as a complete sweep, but I also have them sweeping the Giants, because the Giants... Like the Mets, they stink. And now Matt's going to shit on me for picking the loss to the Jets. Well, the Jets, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> God, I mean, come on, man. It's the Jets. <laughs> it was I, either or. They're either going to lose to the Giants or they're going to lose to the Jets. I, I'm, I'm, still I'm with gonna Matt on that one. Too. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm with Matt on that one. You you, you made yeah. a bad pick there. I'm, I'm yes. just, it's, I'm t- right before the bye. I think you lose before the bye. I, it was a bunch of. We've never got to go back up there. I get it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a dump to begin with. East Rutherford, New Jersey. I mean, come on. (laughs) But my question in the same stadium two weeks in a row. Let's just yeah. Okay. All of us have a have us at nine and eight. Yes. Steve has him winning five of the remaining six games. My question to the both of you: Is this a playoff team? All of us have it at nine and eight. Now, does that place them in the seventh? position which would be a wild card if they if they make the playoffs good for them but they are truly like we said but without this game because this is the first for everybody Mm -hmm. we used to have 17 games they're an eight and eight team they are a middle of the pack pack good Mm -hmm. building if they go nine and eight in the season i'm happy as hell Mm -hmm. and i can't wait for the next season to be you know yep one or two more wins. Mm-hmm. I really like this team building wise. Mm-hmm. This year, if they make the playoffs, they'll probably make some noise. You'll see some talent. I'm not expecting anything though. No. No. Steve, what are your thoughts there? Five um, of the remaining six, of course, I mean, you haven't want to win. Eight, eight and eight would have run away with the division last year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's, one of the reasons I have them sweeping the Giants is because the Giants are going to be so butthurt about what happened the last week that <laughs> they're going to over they're going to overcompensate and 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 do stupid things. I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, I, I agree. So I don't I don't like them as a team at all. I I think it's potentially a playoff depending on how the rest of the division shakes out. And mm-hmm. I don't I I don't have the schedules for the other three teams, so I don't know. Yeah, I have no. Their level of competition is going to be. But yeah, I mean, if you go by last year, um, I just none of the teams were very good, and I don't see any monumental improvement in that. So and the only Dallas point I would make to that is Dak got paid, so it, Dak's not going to be any better than he has been. Yeah, because he got he, paid. He also like, got that's hurt. all yeah. players are like that. You your peak of getting paid, he's not he's not a world beater. Yeah. It used to be funny all the time. We used to have this argument, me and a couple friends in Dallas, uh, Dak or Wentz, and I always took mm. Dak, mm. but I only took Dak on the fact that I didn't like Wentz. Mm. <laughs> now I would take Hurts over Dak. Interesting, yeah. Just because he's younger and throws the ball a little bit better. Better, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, they could be a playoff team, but I think it would be as the division winner, not as a – as a wild card. As a wild card. Yeah. I mean, the only reason I think I went with the uh, sweep, you know, losing against the Skins. I'm sorry, Washington football team. Yep. <laughs> um, with that sure. was they were, by default, you know, they took control of the division last year. 
I think their defense is probably the best in the division. But I will say that the Eagles' defense is right up there with them, kind of maybe like 1-1-A, one, 2-kind one of thing. The team. linebackers are the only... Yeah, and yeah. they're better, I think, on the linebacker position than we are. So I think that's the reason why I have the, you know them losing to this to Washington twice, um, and I do think Washington wins the division. But whether or not that nine and eight with us gets us into the wild card, th- there are so many other factors in the NFC, so many other good teams. Arizona is going to be one of those teams that you're going to watch out for. Oh yeah, um, you got the Rams. I think they'll bounce back. They've got Stafford, who I think is a much better um, quarterback than Goff. Aaron Rodgers is still there. You've got the Saints. You've got the Falcons. You know, who knows what the Falcons are going to do, if they're going to wake up or show up. Carolina's going to bounce back. Year two of Matt Rule. Who knows what that's going to be like. So there's, they're in the mix, but I'm not going to like. Temple connection right there, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But they're, they're, yeah, another they're one of those in the mix, but are they in or out? Who knows? You know, that kind of a deal. But I could see them win nine games and maybe getting in, but not doing much in the playoffs. That kind of a another, deal. Another one of those Temple coaches who bolted for greener pastures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Was only there for like five years and then left. You know, what else is new? It is what it is. Yeah. So, but that's our thoughts, I think. Uh, you know, guys, it'd be interesting yeah, to see up. how this looks, you know, in the next few months. But Steve's nine and eight going. across the board. I, it was very interesting uh, for all of us there as we were doing this in pre-production last night. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll and see. We're what all happens. in the same. We're all in the same fantasy league. So, yes. uh, yeah. screw you and screw you. And, <laughs> and I'll be in touch with you so I screw can you. Log in yeah. how to log in. So, <laughs> gotcha. you I think next episode, John, you and I will have to break down the 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 lineup matchup. You know, it's the oh, Stan God. Marcos Rattlers against the Philadelphia Stars in the oh, Tornado Seattle League. So we'll see how that goes. Well, I did all the drafting for John since he yes, was he there. Yes, he did. Thank so. you. I know, I know. That ticks me off because it's like you got an auto draft and that's terrible. It's Sorry. Awful. I was uh, I was indisposed and I really appreciate you guys coming <laughs> here. I think I did draft you Karsten Wentz though. There you go. I think. There you go. I don't, I don't maybe. I don't remember. He'll just go on the IR because isn't he out for like <laughs> I think so. Yeah. You've got a boo-boo. Yeah. Well, that wraps up episode 48 of Two Noobs Talk. And our thanks, of course, to Steve Murray for jumping on and talking a little. They're always a pleasure. And yeah, this, was, and this was truly last minute. Sixers <laughs> and Eagles talks. Love it. We'll Love see it. you soon. Absolutely. But, John, as always, where could our audience find us, man? I don't even remember. Okay, so we're on Facebook, uh, Instagram, <laughs> uh, TikTok, and Clapper. There for short videos that lead us to our YouTube channel, of course, Two Noobs Talk and Podcast. We'd love it if you could like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It helps get the word out. And, of course, we can also be found on the audio side. Steve, where we are on audio? Oh, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I was all content to sit back here and just relax. <laughs> oh. We're hosted by Apple Podcasts, but what Apple else? Po- uh, po- okay, Podbean, Apple Podcast iHeartRadio, yeah. Uh, John's f- absolute favorite Spotify. <laughs> uh, what am I missing? We're Google. Searchable on Google. Google. Yeah, you Google can find Chrome. us pretty much anywhere. Two Everywhere. noob, two noobs talk. Was it two noobs talking? Two one five five one two. One two. Yeah, exactly. Ah, I got that right. There you go. Of course, the show notes. Show notes are crumpled up in this neat little piece of paper because I'm going to throw them out. But two noobs talking about WordPress.com. Of course, where you can find us. Links yep. to all the oracles we sent in the first half of the episode will be there as well. And what the hell, you know, we'll throw in Mike Missinelli. If you want yeah, to listen, not? snore for nine minutes, go ahead. Why well, not? you're gonna also, you're gonna put up the uh, the records for the Eagles so that we can hold ourselves accountable. Always, we, we will we will do our very best. Of course, we'll do, we will, we'll we will come back for a shaming after the season. Absolutely, absolutely. My thanks, of course, to Steve Murray for joining us. Thank you, John. Anything final to say before we get out of here? Oh. No. <laughs> <He's> speechless. <laughs> boom, boom. Talk to y'all next week, guys. Take care. This country was founded by geniuses, but it's being run by a bunch of idiots. Why do the members of the United States Senate continue to double down on stupid?